After a short three-month summer, the Huskies returned to campus to begin preparation for the upcoming 2011 season. The 18 returning players are joined by nine incoming freshmen. Second-year coach Tracy Leone greets the team in their first preseason meeting. Uh, first, by welcoming you guys here. It's so great to have all the people here. We've been pushing a lot of paper, and uh, we've been doing a lot of preparations for preseason and the season, but it all means everything when the people start to come in. Talked about the character of the people sitting in these desks, and we worked hard to try and make sure that we select people with that type of character. And it's incredibly important that we represent ourselves because we represent our family, we represent our, our individual selves, we represent a team and a university and athletic department. So we represent a lot of entities greater than just yourself. And um, you can choose to be on a team and you can choose not to be on a team, but if you choose to be on a team, you're choosing to follow the structure of that team and that responsibility that comes along with being on a team, all right? Some of the best moments that you'll have together are after a huge game that we win. And we want everybody there for that, okay? And listen, there's going to be some losses, and there's going to be some potential losses that we have that we're disappointed in. Wouldn't you rather be together in those moments too, all right? Early Friday morning, the Huskies arrive at the track for their first session. Before any soccer can be played, the team must showcase the amount of work they put in throughout the summer. Well, we have two different showcases. One is for the field players and one is for the goalkeepers. We try and make it fairly position specific for the goalkeepers. So the field players test is just almost like an interval test. And it's called the YBMI because that stands for You Better Make It, which was a story from a while back when I was uh, playing. And so uh, it's just an interval test. We feel like it's a really good introductory test to measure what their fitness level was like coming into the season, and just an overall good test to do just throughout the summertime. The fitness test um, is the fitness test of death. Um, <laughs> it's an 800, a 400, two shuttle sprints, and then another 800 and 400. One, um, go. Being my first year running it, I was really, really anxious, you know, trying to do the work this Nine. summer so that like, I came in ready to go and at the beginning, everyone was looking really great. Like everyone stayed together. Um, it was that second 800 after you know you do like the sprinting and like the first half of it that you know you just gotta push through it. And it's like mainly mental because everyone really can make it. It's just like you know telling yourself that you can do it. And I just remember thinking to myself that like don't let the fitness part of it be the reason that like you know you don't sip on the field or anything like that. Like I wanted, I didn't want to regret like not doing well in the fitness test. So. I just remembered like basically in my head going over, just run, like don't think about anything, just run, like make it, and that's just what I did to pass, so. <laughs> She's a great story. I mean, she really wanted to come to Northeastern, I think right when I got the position. I can't remember if I got an email from her, I think I did. I got an email from her and I called some of her coaches and we had just gotten here, so we were really at the beginning of the recruiting process for that class. I played four years of varsity soccer in high school. It was the end of my sophomore year. I was at a tournament, and you know, everything was going great, and all of a sudden, um, I was going 1v1 with the goalkeeper, jumped up, landed, felt excruciating pain in my knee, <laughs> never felt anything like that before and was just freaking out because I didn't know what was going on and um, went to the doctor, got an MRI, they told me I tore my ACL. I acted like the whole world was coming to an end basically. It was just, I'd, I never thought it would happen to me. Like it's a really common surgery and happens, unfortunately happens to people all the time now but I just never really thought it would happen to me and when it did I just remembered thinking like I know like this, this, I can't let this be it for me, I need to keep going. Um, going into my junior year, that's like a big recruiting year. So I just tried to do the work early. Um, I came back at seven months and felt pretty good, felt pretty strong. Two months later, I tore my other knee and <laughs> I was just kind of the same thing. I was just thinking like, you know, I don't want to stop playing yet, I want to keep going. It's not fair that like this has happened to me. So I just kept, you know, pushed through it again. Um, came back at seven months again. Ended up uh, tearing that same knee, and um, I actually got recruited by Tracy uh, right before I tore my ACL for the third time. And so, talk about an enormous challenge. So she had to come in into her freshman year, 
which is very difficult when you cannot play, <laughs> when you know that you cannot play, because that's a way to get to know the team. And so it's a monumental challenge, but she came in, worked hard in a rehab, worked hard to really be ingrained with the players, even though she couldn't practice, worked hard to be involved, and then started playing 100% probably after spring break. So this was March when she started to play, and the accumulation of three serious knee injuries is a huge challenge to get through mentally and physically. And to, to know how hard she must have worked in the summer to get to where she is, is incredibly inspiring and exciting for us. I mean, that's, how we, that's a little story of how we want everyone to be. Still at the fitness showcase, the team results were not as good as Coach Tracy Leon expected. And honestly, that's why I'm disappointed. Because we had, Brett of course couldn't run, but we had 11 of 23 field players pass. Not even half, not even half of our field players passed the test. So we gotta work it out for us, honestly. The people that passed, amazing, amazing. The people that didn't, you better freaking work. All right, and we will do this again. We will do the YB light again and see the improvement, all right? Well, you know, I think you always go back to, this is a, um, an opportunity to show what you did over the summertime. This is an opportunity to show um, how important this team is and how well you want to do um, by how you train through the summertime. And I think you try and motivate them at the moment by saying this is a mental challenge that we all have to get through together and when you do that and you triumph over something like that and as a team you help each other get through something that's a challenge or that's difficult, you're going to grow as a team and you're going to grow as an individual. And so I think you try and fall back on the mental um, capacity that it takes to overcome a challenge like a fitness showcase. Everyone's gonna be a little anxious, even if you know you're gonna pass. You, you just have those butterflies in your stomach and you're a little anxious because you know that you're gonna have to do something that's a challenge. But at the same time, if you've done the work in the summer, you know you're gonna pass it. After the first day jitters were gone, those players who did not pass the original YBMI were given a chance to rerun it. This time, the conditions were not as easy. Typical New England weather made the track slippery and the course more challenging watching the senior class We're showing up to the fitness showcase a second time when, and pacing the players that needed to do better. Uh, they all were there, so it is very, very important to them. And when you have that type of leadership and that type of senior class, um, you have a good feeling. You just you have to do better, all right, uh, than you did before. And then you're showing progress and getting closer to that point if you don't reach it today. Moments are made of right here. You're wearing a championship ring, you're going to remember today. Remember what just happened? I Laugh about it. I'm glad you did it. Okay? Here we go. Here we go. Here at 140. 135. 38, 39. I love that almost everybody made the last quarter. Give it up for that. Because again, I brought this up the last time for those that did. Did everybody make it? Oh. No, okay, I think all but one didn't make it. And that, that tells me it's important to you. That tells me you want to get fitter because if you didn't make the second half, you were going to make the showcase. But it's important enough to you to try and make that last one. That is mental toughness. All right, and I'll take any team, any day of the week, and twice on Sunday with that level of toughness. All right, because we can do a lot of things with that. All right, so really, really, really great morning for them. Good stuff. The first one, we, I think we had 11 pass it. So, Coach Mayne has come back out today. <laughs> um, everyone improved, which was great. And all the girls were like, sore and tired. So, for people to pass it today was awesome. But, especially in this weather as well, you know. But yeah, it was great. Neither rain nor shine can keep the Huskies away from Parsons Field. With nine incoming freshmen, the coaches work to get everyone on the same playing field through a combination of technical and tactical sessions. Uh, practice at Parsons has been tremendous. We've been very happy with how they've come out to training and how they've approached training. Um, even throughout the time that they've, you know, fatigue has set in more and they've become more tired. Um, they've come ready to practice, really focused, ready to work hard. And, and it is a really coachable group. And I think we've progressed. At the beginning, we wanted to just get them played in, you know, and that's kind of what we felt after watching, after the first session, you know, watching them play. We felt we just needed to get them a little more played in, get them a little more touches, and we wanted to get to know them more so. And, um, and also it helps get the jitters out when you can play. After a few days of hard work on and off the field, 
the Huskies were given the night off from training to attend the Boston Breakers game at Harvard Stadium. They played against some of the best players like in the world right now. Abby Wambach was there and I remember as soon as she was like close enough to us in the stands, we all were taking out our phones, cameras, taking pictures. Um, but it was great. There was two great goals that Abby had. Um, a lot of great opportunities. That was the best thing. I think all of us didn't really care who won. We just wanted to see some like awesome goals, like awesome defending, everything and all around. Like it was just like, a pretty great game. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean hopes for the season are high. And, and uh, I think we have just an incredibly promising team. Watching the senior class and how important it is to them, and they've shown that by their actions, through their training mentality, through helping our newcomers along. Um, I and mean, when you have that type of leadership and that type of senior class, um, you have a good feeling about the direction you can go. So it's promising. I mean, certainly our goals are to win a CAA regular season championship and to win a, the CAA tournament championship and, and go on in the playoffs and see how well we can do. And so that's going to be our goal every year. And uh, I feel like we um, can do that this season. Join Huskies Unleashed next week as we take an in-depth look at the goalkeepers' preparation for this year's first game time performance in their scrimmage versus Providence.